fuck Mary Kill right now, you have to answer. Sandy Cheeks, Patty Mayonnaise, Lilo's sister. Patty Mayonnaise, whatever. Oh, from Doug? Um, I'm killing Patty. Killing Patty. From Doug, you don't like? She- Wow, Whoa! A, hey, welcome to the Squad Goals Podcast. <laughs> I like that he said that. Like I'm a killer, and then I was like, "Wow, Patty is like she's <laughs> with a, a straight ass face." That's a conspiracy. <laughs> yeah, it just sounds like you're killing her. Welcome, <laughs> nah, 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 nah. welcome to the Squad Goals Podcast. <laughs> I'm AJ, and to my left we have Dita Low. And to my right, on the soundboard, audio engineer extraordinaire. It's, it's your boy. It's Devon. How y'all doing today? And I'm um, Sweet Lips. Sweet Lips. <laughs> so. <laughs> Editor put Sweet Lips on there. Name right there. So there was this uh, show D'Anzo recommended to me, and I watched it, and I wanted to talk about it. It, it was like a more mini series, like a three episode documentary. Why are you doing so many finger quotes? Because I don't know why I said show. I was oh. trying to clarify, but um, don't <laughs> with cats. Oh, that one is crazy. You watched it? Yes. Okay, so we're all on the same page. Yeah, let's go. We're on the same page. Don't <laughs> with cats is crazy. And I didn't know anything going into it. Yeah. I thought it was about that lady in London who threw a cat in a trash can and walked away. And I was wrong. And it was crazy. I highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. But the thing was, it, it did talk about, I always say, like, the internet's like a mob. And sometimes yeah. it's not good. He's like, no. there's a part of that documentary where, like, they bullied a guy to, like, kill him. Kill himself, yeah. Because He's like, already depressed. There's no checks and balances. However... The mob's sometimes good because they have so many people that they can split up and, like, find details. Like, I'm going to go through Google Maps and look at every, like, Yo, they gas were station. I'm going to go like crazy frame by... Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, they have more time than the, like, police, and there's more people than the police. But, like, they have, like, no authority like the police, so it's kind of like there's no direction of, like, what's good and bad. Like, there's so many stories... Of them getting outraged at someone and like taking it out on them, where it's like, yo, like we don't even know if this person did what you're saying. Like everyone needs to chill. Like the story would break tomorrow about something, and they go crazy. Everybody wants to say their part. Like yeah, er- everyone. It's it's like an angry mob. It's a modern day angry mob, and I'm glad it showed both sides. But anyway, like yeah, it was just a crazy story. First of all, like a lot of twists and turns, and like. It went in a lot of directions I didn't expect because I knew nothing going in. Yeah, I think it was like really well done how it just asked the question at the end, like, or it poses that, you know, here's this kid who was like a serial killer and, you know, we, we, we don't want to give him the attention. However, like, you know, and they ask it in a way of like, well, we're bringing it to light, but at the same time, at, like, you got to realize what you're doing, too. Yeah. And the fact that, like, you're giving it attention and yeah. um, we're like, you see, you're the, giving him or you're giving these kind of people what they want. And you see, like, the friend of the victim saying, like, hey, they don't e-, like everyone knows this guy's name, but like no one knows the guy who got murdered. Like no one knows him. And he's the one that we should be upset about. Yeah. Not. Just it's like no one's upset at the person dying. They're just angry at the guy. And it's like kind of like this weird emotion where it's like we live in a society where everyone likes to get angry and no one feels bad. Like, you know, and it's I don't even know how to like phrase it. It's like everyone gets angry. However, no one. It's just I want to get angry to be angry. I really don't care what you did. You're just the guy right now that everyone's pissed at. Yeah, and they just hop on that train, hop on that wagon. But that ending too, yeah, that was the moment where I was like, whoa, whoa, where she was like, yeah, you watch a like major like documentary about this guy, like, why, like, why are you giving him attention? This is what he wanted. Yeah, even though I do love all those documentaries, <laughs> all the serial killer I, ones. I like, yeah, like the documentaries where it's like multiple episodes, and it's like here's one story over like six episodes so you get to see like it all unfold yeah and it's like making a murder the jinx which i think those two you should watch back to back i've said that a lot it's on like two different channels like netflix and hbo 
But like the jinx is about a guy who most likely murdered like three people. Everyone around him is dying. His wife, his best friend, his neighbor. However, he's super rich and can't go to jail. He keeps on getting away with it and then he, someone else dies. There's like evidence piling up that he did this and he still gets away and he is like walking free actually now i think he's in jail because the documentary got evidence that they filed charges but then making a murder is the opposite where it's this guy keeps on getting accused of murders and there's really no evidence to pinpoint it but he's poor and keeps on going to jail like and it's this That's why I'm like, I think watching them back to back, it's like telling the same story from two sides of you have money, you can kind of get away with any crime, you're poor, you're kind of screwed because it costs money to get out of jail. Like Jeff Bezos apparently just had $17,000 in parking tickets like in a month because he has all the money in the world, so he doesn't need to follow those parking. Like he can just go, I'm going to park in front of a fire hydrant. What's $100? I don't care. Like... You know, it's like, but yeah. you, you're like, crap, I have to pay $100. Like, and it's kind of that showing the inequality of power, justice. Man. You know, on the, on the, on the documentary, like everyone like says how like smart he is and don't get me wrong. Like, I, I feel like he was very creative in what he did, but I don't ever think that you doing whatever you can for the sake of attention makes you smart. You know, like I think they were more saying he was smart that he he was getting away with it. Yeah, like he was always like yeah. It was more like I I don't think they ever thought he was smart for the crimes, but more of the fact that like well at the same time they were onto him from the beginning. But it was also because like he told them like I, I that was the one thing I got from the documentary was he would literally go in that group and say like. His name is this, like, and it was kind of like if he didn't do that, no, I don't think they would have found uh, him. He like, definitely wanted to get chased. Yeah, right? and but I mean, I think eventually he would get caught. But but the <laughs> the one thing, yeah, oh for sure, he probably would have get caught because that's the thing. Like I hear with like criminals or people on the run, it if you're on the run from like the police or like federal agencies, you have to be a hundred percent perfect. You mess up one time, you're yeah. caught. So odds are you're going to slip just a little once and that's how you get caught. And as the police chasing you, you don't have to be perfect all the time. You just have to wait for that one mess up. And with so, him, he wanted the attention so bad that he he basically, he would give clues. He would give yeah. leads so that way, like, you know, at the end of the day, he, he figured he would get caught. But I just... Well, like... Going back to like a couple of weeks ago when I talked about Mindhunter, because both the show and the book touched on this, where it's like most of the time, the killers don't necessarily want to kill just for the sake of killing. The killing is satisfying something else. Yeah. So it's like for this guy oh, in the thrill, the thrill, the, yeah, the thrill of the chase. He wanted the chase. He wanted the attention. So how do you get that? You have to kill. I he probably took a little joy in it, but he wasn't like, oh, I can't wait to kill someone else. He was more yeah. like he was getting off on the intention, not the killing. And that's like once again, like in the Mine Hunter, they classify these killers of kind of getting their mode of like, what are they getting out of this? Are they getting like? Is it the having power over a person where you're torturing them? Is it the attention where you're writing letters to the police? Is it this? Is it that? And it's kind of like, it's never really the, like, a lot of the times it's not the killing. It's yeah, more Unless just, you're making it like an art or you're just well, and that, it, that's creepy. That's like, like the a, different categories. But like, or something like that. there was multiple people in Mindhunter that like kind of turned themselves in the police. Like the first killer they really talked to the co-ed killer like he went on the run and he called up the police going like hey i'm like in colorado like and got he just turned himself in because he was like oh they didn't catch me so he just was like um doing that nowadays though is significantly more difficult i will say that I, i think it's a lot harder there was a show on like abc or fox do you remember i think we talked about it before where it's like eight groups of two and they all are like on the run and they have to like outrun like marshals and FBI agents and they have this like team with like all these resources and tools and they have to run and if they can like outlast them for like a week or something like that they get like money 
That's a crazy show. And it's just like, go. And it's like the police like going to like their friend's house, their family's house, checking social media, credit card statements. It's like you have like a two hour head start. You just got to run. And I don't think it lasts. And I watched and it was like really cheesy. It wasn't as good of a show as it is in like the the idea. The idea. Yeah, the idea. I heard the concept. I'm like, I got to watch this. Execution. It was just, it was kind of like, oh, this is kind of not. Like the police were in this like really like overproduced like headquarters with all these monitors that you're like, this isn't doing anything. normal. And they're like, it was just like, they're looking on like hacking like. Like I got a ping on his credit card, like security camera. We got a, we got a lock on a security cam footage in the gas station. It's like that's not how any of no. that works because the, the gas actually, station's not theatrics. hooked up to like yeah. some system. Like that's literally they, the producers like here's some footage. We just got it at a sitco. Just down the make it look like you pulled it up. Yeah, because it's like a gas station's gonna record to like a little DVR and it's not hooked up to the internet unless it's like one of those. It's still, it's all private. Like yeah. But yeah, it was. You I mean, for the step number one, you have to get rid of your cell phone. But it's so hard to do anything without a cell phone, and to stay in communication with anyone. Because once you have your your cell phone, I mean, you got GPS. Even when you take a picture, yeah, get a burner phone, man. You get a, a location, even a burner phone. You know, you just get like ten of them joined. You got to get two: one for the plug yeah. and one for the load. <laughs> That's yeah. what I always say. Uh, for the load. But yeah, no, uh, the documentary was really cool. I I thought it touched on a lot of things that like I'm into, but I I love all those true crime, like really long documentaries. Yeah, no, it was, it was, it was a good one. A very well done. Um, And it was tense. Like it kept. Yeah. I mean, they all, they all are like the, you should watch the jinx because the jinx is like that. I think it's like six episodes and it's just like, you keep on watching it and it's just getting worse and worse. And you're like, how is this happening? Like. It when just you got money, and it just do do do, and it's just like all these people, like police officers and lawyers and judges, are like, how how is he like getting away with this? Like money, money. they're all trying to put him in jail, and it was just like they bring him to court for murder. He literally like confesses in the courtroom, and the jury just goes not guilty. Like these his lawyers crazy. were able to frame it in such a way where he's like, I mean. Yeah, I cut up his body and threw it in the river, but it was because I walked in, saw him dead, and I got accused of killing my wife. I didn't want to get accused of another murder, so yeah, I cut the body off. And That's like, so crazy, he was man. making jokes about it. Like, yeah, I cut off the head and it kind of like sprayed on me. And the like lawyers and stuff are talking like, the moment we saw the jury laugh at jokes of him like cutting up a body, we're like, we lost. Like, yeah. he won them over because he's just. Somehow charming, but he's so socially awkward. He's not. He's so like. He's got some kind of like. Yeah, he has his his hands deep in their pockets. That's probably what it is. Uh, it's and, but it's even like he doesn't have money. Not, he, I mean, he does, but it's his family. He came from family money. Like he was the black sheep of the family. He was the son. Like he was the firstborn son, but like the dad gave the business to the secondborn son because he's like you're not good enough for this. Like. But, mm-hmm. like, the brother is, like, bailing him out and, like, paying for his lawyers. It, it's a really good documentary. That sounds and, crazy. And another one, American Vandal, you should watch. I've talked about that before. Because it is so good at making fun of those documentaries. Like, if you're a fan of them, yeah. you go, man, they are getting, like, every cliche from these types of documentaries, like, to a T. And it's just about, like, a high school little, like, expulsion slash suspension. And it's... Like only five episodes because I remember watching it and by the time you get bored of the joke, it's the last episode. But it's so like well thought out where it's almost where you're watching it and you're like, how is this not a real crime? Like they thought of everything. And like the kids in the that are making this like fake documentary and they're like TV production class are like taking all like they have to track like something at a party and they're taking all the footage. From the party on off of social media, like Snapchats, Instagrams, Facebooks, and like making a map and like tracking the thing. They're like, okay, well, Susie posted this on Instagram at like 4:30. And then at 4:45, Bobby posted this video. If you see in the background, we got that. And yeah. it's like so that's kind of interesting. It, it is super interesting, and it's like so well thought out, and it's so juvenile where it's like, 
a guy spray painted dicks on the teacher's cars and got kicked out. And they're like, he's innocent. We can prove it. And it's just showing like the case, all the motives, all these other suspects that it could have been. They're analyzing dick drawings going like he always puts like a vein. And if you look on the cars, there's no vein except like this one. And it's like. This car, he put work in. He put hairs. He put, and it's like that was the sus. That was the target, and he had to just cover his tracks yeah. and do the other cars like real. Like it's like Scooby Doo Kids. Yeah, I remember Scooby Doo Kids. Scooby Doo Kids. Yeah, Red Herring. Red Herring. Sounds a good name. I miss Scooby Doo Kids. Yeah, there was. What was that yeah, like? A little before your time. Phase. <laughs> what was that phase I'm in like two years younger than him? The early nineties. Scooby Doo Kids. Where every old cartoon, Scooby Doo, Flintstones, Bugs oh, Bunny yeah. had to have a kids the, version. Yeah, the baby that was Looney like, Tunes. That was what? Teen, like uh, 2006, seven? For what? What? When everything started getting kidified. No, those no, were reruns. This was like 90s. Yeah, it were yeah. reruns for you. They and were like the, 90s. They shows. made like the Looney Tune babies. For well, there was, Lo- there was Looney Tune babies, yeah. and then there was Tiny Tunes. There was Tiny Tunes, which is old. And yeah. even. No, yeah, they did that back in the day, but they like brought it, it back. Um, yeah, yeah, I think they did. Like it went to another phase where like everything was baby fight um, again. Like they brought a new Scooby Doo like kids one. They had a. Uh, that's your baby. They time. have they have Teen Titans now. The Teen Titans go, which is baby fight. Like yeah. everything is. Well, all, they're, they're just a different art it's direction. All and rounded and bubbly. I yeah. watched a, like Powerpuff a video Girls. on that where it's like, yeah, like we go through phases in animation, and right now we're in this like round like super cartoony phase. We were in like a realistically drawn yeah. phase, and it's just. That's just the style, and it's going to change in, like, five years. But what was I? Tiny Toons? Uh, that's what I wanted to bring. Tiny Toons, the movie, How I Spent My Summer Vacation, one of the greatest movies of all time. We're tiny. We're toony. We're, we're all, all a little loony. loony and in this cartoony, we're invading your TV. TV. <laughs> he, has, he, he doesn't know. Uh, <laughs> but the movie where it's, like, all these mini stories of their like vacation is I don't know that movie. It is top. It is top. They all like go on these side like side stories, which I heard Donald so Glover top. for Atlanta season two modeled that season off of Tiny Toons How I Spent My Summer Vacation. Wow. He said it. Where everyone goes on their separate ways and you kind of like follow these mini stories of like yeah. all around the same time frame. I them, kind of see it because it wasn't really all of them together. In yeah, Atlanta. them going on the the road trip to the Disney knockoff. I forgot where it was, and they literally go on the monorail. And he's like, "Oh my god, this is awesome!" They were like on a three day road trip, and then they're like, "Okay, time to go home." Like we just yeah. like to ride the monorail. I'm not gonna lie to you; I vaguely remember this. It season. is Who good. Knows it? Bugs, oh, uh, Buster, and what's the girl's bunny? Lola. Lola. But the Tiny Toons one. They weren't like bugs and stuff. They were all like different. Oh, yeah. No, the pink one. Yeah. They go into like some redneck thing and sing Tina Turner, I'm pretty sure. (laughs) They go in like a redneck, like possum, like these redneck, like backwater area. And they're trying to get eat. They're about to get eaten by these rednecks. It is a good movie. It's a good movie. (laughs) I have like little like surges of like. Instances of the movie, but I can't remember that well. It is a good. I remember the show. Show is good. Yeah, but the movie, Chef's Kiss. <laughs> That's my rating. One Chef's Kiss. Just one. Just. Is there? Is that the? Why the do you pinnacle? look up to yeah. your chefs? Why are you looking up to your chef though? When I'm looking up. Yeah. Why are you looking up to your chef? Because I'm amazing. reveling in the like feeling of it of. Mm. Mm. It looks so bad. What do you mean? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, how's going vegetarian? Um, it's not vegetarian. It's pescatarian. pescatarian. How's pescatarianism it's, going? Did you hit good. your 30 day goal? Yeah, I'm on day 36, 37, something like that. Thank you. How are you feeling? I feel good. I feel real good. Would you recommend it to others? Of course I would. It's it's good for the environment, and it's good for yourself. Are you feeling better? Are you feeling more healthy? I'm more curious. I'm. Um, I was feeling really, really good till I had like eight margaritas last night. Mm. Oh, um, that will do it. 
Yeah, yeah it did it. Yeah, I'll but, do it. No, besides that, no, I feel good. I feel you have good. more energy. Are you getting more lively? You have a little pep in your step. I think so. Like, if you were to... It's con- still early on. I feel like, you know... 30 is- days isn't nothing to... Gawk over? I mean, it's... <laughs> There's nothing to gawk over for me. I don't think that's a term, yeah. but I also don't know what it's the term knock, is. Right? It's nothing to knock. It's nothing to 30, 30 days is nothing to knock. Gawk? To knock at? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just inventing words. Um, gawking is to stare. Like, oh damn, that man is gawking at me. Like I'm I'm certain that naked man is gawking at well, me. Well, in some kind of way it makes sense. Anyway, but yeah, it's But for anyone who isn't who is a meat eater, a carnivore, as you will? <laughs> what what would you do to like persuade them? Um, I I wouldn't necessarily do anything to persuade them. It, it's it's all your choice. I do feel like as a collective humans on this earth, if you just have like one less meal without meat, or one meat without one meal without meat, like it would completely change the way we eat meat as a whole fish in the world. Meat. Fish is meat, and maybe one, <laughs> maybe one day, maybe one day I can, I will not eat that fish. Maybe one day I might. But, but I, I feel like, in day. all honesty, pescatarian is still a lot harder. It's so hard. It's so hard. Fish are friends, oh. not food. Fish are friends, not food. Um, Nemo taught me that. Him and Bruce. I think step, step by step. I've talked to you about this when we were in LA, but I'm pretty sure, like in the next ten years, all meat, or let's say seventy percent of meat, is going to be like artificial meat. There's not going to be anything in seventy years. Did you say? I said seven. I said seven. There's not going to be anything in seven years. You might be right. I think get that out of your head. I think what what is it? Enjoy meat now, guys. We don't know if there's a tomorrow. We how many years do we have? That the scientist said? Like 12, right? Yeah. Like, they're like, we got 12 years left. With the global crisis. That's crazy. Yeah, they're like, literally came out going, hey, we got 12 years left. I'm just, we're letting you know. Make like, this shit happen. Yeah. It's not even like a make this shit happen. It's like, we, we didn't. <laughs> hey, uh-huh. I think they even said like, it's kind of too late. Bye. That was my TED talk. We we warned you. You said fuck you nerds and now you got you 12 die. years left. And now you yeah. die. It's like it's I mean, a- but I guess what I was kind of saying was just like you know, it takes everybody or a big majority to to change the landscape. I I agree. I agree. I actually did something uh this week because I did one bad thing that wasn't like environmentally sound. Bad boy. One bad thing bad I always boy. did. It was like that's my thing. That's my king. Uh, I used to get water bottles all the time. And I, I would order water bottles. Throw but them on the yeah. ground. I it's a banned item from my house now. No more water bottles. I you got a job? Brita. I got a Brita filter. What if I walk in with a water bottle? And nope. No, nope, leave it out. Throw it in the woods in the back. That's don't bring pollution. it in. Don't bring it in. It's pollution. Uh, Not in my house. There's a lot of water bottles in my house. However, I try to thirsty boy. I try to recycle when I can, but thirsty boy. Yeah, man. It's hot out here. It's hot out here for. It's hot right here right now. Honestly, it's hot out here for a pimp. Why are you trying to pay the money for your rent? But yeah, no water bottles in my home. Yeah. Only Brita filter. That cool. I that was the one thing I was always like. Cool. I know this. I know this is bad. I know I'm being a bad little boy when I do bad this. Boy. However, <laughs> bad I boy. need a spanking. Yeah, I'm like. Y'all getting weird. You're the one who was enticing bad little boy. Oh, I was enticing bad boys. Yeah. I think you guys were enticing bad boys. Bad boys. <laughs> bad boys. We'll let the tape show right now. <laughs> And that shows the answer. And that being said, that's been our episode of the Squad Goals Podcast. If you want to watch this podcast, you can go to YouTube.com and look up the Squad Goals Podcast. And if you want to listen to our beautiful voices, you can go to Spotify, Spotify, Google Play, Play. Stitcher, Stitcher. and most of all, iTunes. iTunes. Why is iTunes most of all? Because that's where most of the people are listening right now. Really? Oh. Yeah. We'll see you guys Friday. We out of here. Peace, peace, peace. Bye. Have a good Shout out to the iTunes listeners. Yeah.